Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're all doing great. In this episode right here, I'm going to be talking about first principle thinking in software engineering. The reason why I'm making this video is for several reasons, actually. One of the reasons is that, you know, I see a certain trend in the industry and I think it's not the best trend that's been going on. And the other reason is that, you know, when I work with software engineers, whether they're on my team or not on my team, um, you know, they ask me these questions of how they can you know progress in this career in this job right in this industry of software engineering and basically i have only this video to say to them you know if you want to actually be um more than just like a junior or a mid-level you need to be able to master thinking in first principles so let's talk about what first principle is right first principle thinking is it's a, a method of learning about something. It's a, a method of gaining knowledge. So um, I think it was recently made popular by Elon Musk. It has it's something which has existed um, since Arist you know Aristotle's time, but recently it was you know talked about by Elon Musk you know several years ago when he was talking about Tesla and you know um, how he's overcoming the problems at Tesla, and he talks about this first principle thinking. And in the example that he gave, what was asked was, you know, like, how did he solve the problem of, you know, creating electric vehicle? And he said that, you know, to create an electric vehicle, you need a really good battery and you need to, you need to be cheap. You know, he, he, he was able to achieve that was through first principle thinking. So what he did was he broke down the battery, right? Well, not him, but, you know, in, in Tesla as a company, they broke down um, what a battery is and he broke it down into like its basic components and from then he learned that you know the, the the team at tesla learned that well all these components that make up the battery are actually pretty cheap and we can actually acquire them for pretty cheap and then we just need to figure out how to put it back together and make it work right that experience of breaking things down into its fundamental components gave the team knowledge of you know first of all how a battery would work and second of all how they would be able to create it themselves using cheap things components that they can buy and then produce the the battery themselves so that was how they solved the problem of you know building the battery for the electric car as a software engineer um you know you need to be able to think in first principles because every time you're faced with some kind of a problem you need to learn how to break it down. So let's say, you know, you, you got um, a problem, a, a user problem from your project manager or your CTO or whoever you're working with or your teammate. How do you take that problem and, and break it down into small parts and then be, to be able to actually uh, solve the problem? Um, how do you go from not having anything at all to having something that actually works? And it's this process of first principles thinking. And to be able to do that as a software engineer, you need to understand some very basic fundamentals. And those are data structures and algorithms. So data structure is just a representation of some kind of data, right? It is the structure of how your data is going to look, how it's going to work, how it's going to be stored. So that's what a data structure is. Whether it's being stored on a, in a database, on a disk somewhere, or in memory, it's just how you're going to represent a certain piece of data. One may be thinking, well, you know, this is just like information systems. If I do game, what I want to do game programming. Games also have their data structures, believe it or not. For example, like if you want to render a pixel on the screen, you need to know what the X and Y coordinate is. The X and Y is a data structure, right? And you need to know what color um, the pixel is going to be colored. And so you need to know the color information. And that color information is a data structure in itself. So whatever problem you're solving in software engineering, um, you're going to be faced with working with some kind of data structure. Uh, I'll give you one, another example. So let's say, for example, in an in information system or a business uh, system, right? So for example, e-commerce, you have a list of products. How are you going to represent that product? Um, learning to break that down, learning how, okay, well, I have a product, I have its name, I have a description, I have a tag, I have a category. Um, what needs to go into a category? How is the product going to be linked to that category? How do you represent the stock? Like how many items of that product you're going to have? When a 
customer clicks add to cart what happens right so all this is 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 how it starts from how you're going to represent all this data and if there's one piece of advice i can give you is if you learn um how to break things down into the most core basic concepts into data structures you will go a very long way as a software engineer because you're going to be able to solve a lot of problems without going to stack overflow and copying and pasting you're going to actually be able to in your head while you're sleeping while you're walking in the shower somewhere not in front of the computer be able to think and come up with solutions and this just takes practice to be able to just you know code in your head it's so much faster because you're able to think and iterate you know millions of times in your head which is much faster than you know typing something and then waiting for the output but if you can do that in your head and make up a system in your head and then later code it that's much faster and that's what makes the difference between a junior or mid level and someone who's a tech lead or a CTO a CTO is able to, to look at an entire system and understand how each component works and they're able to say okay you know you can take this component here and work on that and that component here and work on that and the the only way they're able to do that is because they're able to break things down they're able to take such a large complex problem and break it down into basic data structures and algorithms next i want to talk about algorithms so algorithms are not as complex as it sounds like you know when i tell people about algorithms they get like ooh algorithms it's actually not that complicated all it is is just it's a description of how something works it's a description of how let's say a data would flow in the system for example you know when you have a, a an e-commerce and I, and i keep bringing up e-commerce just because it's something everyone understands so let's say you have an e-commerce uh, cart you know you have an order right so you know you need the the customer to make make an order so a cart is just an open order right it's an order that hasn't been paid for hasn't been fulfilled but you need to be able to transition that open order once a customer has confirmed their decision to purchase the goods how do you confirm that well you can make a the, the customer will make a payment so after the customer makes a payment the order is now completed right or it's it can be fulfilled and then once it's once the customer has paid for it what other information do you need to collect do you need to collect the address and so on and so forth right so now you're starting to get deep into what needs to happen inside of the system for it to actually work and and that's what i want to emphasize on is it's not important to you know to learn um the framework the 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 you know the the latest and greatest uh, framework of the week it's much better to pick something which is stable it doesn't change like for example elixir phoenix ruby on rails and actually master the actual creativity which is using data and algorithms to create a, a whole new innovative system rather than just learning the framework and then just scratching the surface of what software engineering is all about uh, i hope you took away something useful from this video uh if you want to see more videos like this uh hit subscribe and hit the notification button um and also uh put a comment below if if there's a system or some kind of a problem that you want me to solve on a youtube video help you break it down uh post a comment and, and let me know your thoughts and i would be more than happy to help and that's pretty much it for this video i'll see you guys and girls in the next one